life with Oprah. There's a famous principle. I mean, it may or may not be famous, but it, it, if it isn't, it should be. Uh, basically, that has to do with calling things out as they may. Basically, believing it and speaking it into belief, even if it hasn't happened yet. And I work with Oprah and others at, at her level. There's an example of that I've done uh, uh, podcast on Sarah Blakely, who I, you know, plan to work uh, with potentially, and uh, some other people at that level, Shamath. So let me let me talk a little bit about that principle and specifically working with Oprah and why that happens for me. So basically, you know, birds of a feather do flock together. In one of my books, I have a I have a, a chapter on networking, and I talk about it's not so important who you reach out to. It's more important who reaches out back to you because you can, you know, call a thousand people and they can all not take your phone call or you can call one person and they can say, yeah, I want to mentor you. I want to help you. So it's kind of like what level of service you can provide. And Oprah, you know, success doesn't happen by accident. Like Oprah's not a billionaire because, you know, she got lucky. She's a billionaire because, she understands the spiritual principles, the law of attraction. She's always talking about mindset. She's always talking about spirituality and living those principles. You know, as you put into the world, uh, that's what you get back. I mean, I saw her recent interview with Bob Iger, and you could just see two people at a really high level, you know, connecting with each other. And she's always been that way. I mean, she's always served her audience, and uh, she's always nurtured a lot of people like Dr. Phil and a bunch of other people that she helped, uh, you know, get their start. And it was a win-win situation. Oprah's really big in win-win. And I want to say a couple things about Oprah and about working with Oprah in the future. So I saw when she was partnering with uh, Brenda Burchard, who's a really evolved uh, and, uh, you know, terrific person also. So um, she, re- she had a show that I recently saw. I mean, it was back in, I think, 1994, 1992, something like that. But I saw it online, part of it, because it was interesting. And she reunited with people. And one person she reunited with, I believe, in the uh, episode specifically that I saw the clip on was uh, of her high school sweetheart, I guess her first love. And when he came on, and he, he was a really terrific guy. I mean, he... Uh, he was doing good things. He was working in different uh, social services, like leadership. And um, she she made a comment to him that I, I just found fascinating. And I think it was kind of an attempt. I'm not a mind reader to maybe cut him off at the past a little bit because he was starting to share like more personal information about Oprah. And um, not, not exaggerated, but a little bit. And you could tell kind of a little bit the energy was that she was maybe feeling uncomfortable. She didn't want, you know, the whole world to know her business or what she was like in high school. Uh, so she made a comment to him. She said, and I'm forgetting the exact wording, but it was basically, she said something like, I can't believe how normal you are. Or you are or something like, you're such an incredible normal person. And to the whole world, that probably sounded like a compliment, but to me, it sounded like an insult, and I wanted to, but not an unfair insult. Not an insult is too strong a word, but I think she was basically trying to redirect him, I think. And I think, you know, people that are spectacular, when they call somebody normal, and I'm not a mind reader, so maybe she meant it differently, but when someone is spectacular and they call someone normal, that's basically calling somebody average, say that you've led a very traditional life. You know, you're not kind of an out-of-the-box type thinker that, you know, there's a lot of people like you. Normal, by definition, kind of implies, uh, you know, that there's a, it's, it's just following the norms. And I think Oprah is a person that has exceeded the norms. Like, she came from a background where they said she was going to be one thing, and she turned out to be much, much, you know, much, much more, with quite a few more muches. So Oprah's, you know, they say that emotional intelligence is much more important than uh uh, than uh, cognitive intelligence. And Oprah has both, but, you know, her emotional intelligence is kind of on display. Like, just the way she kind of, you know, uh, talks to her audience, you can you kind of tell, like, the, the wheels in her mind are turning. Like, just the way she phrases things. Like, people that have great emotional intelligence, they just turn on a phrase and they know the effect it's going to have. And this is just one of countless examples. Like, when she said to him, uh, you, you're the most normal person, or I can't believe how normal you are, you could kind of tell that was her way of telling to the audience, like, 
Yeah, he's a great guy, but anything he says is from his perspective, and his perspective is less than my perspective. Or she's saying to him, yeah, you're great, but, you know, you didn't wind up with me, and your life would have been a thousand times better, you know, if you did wind up with me. Or whatever the message was, it was kind of like just an acknowledgement. I wouldn't even call it a put down. I would call it more an acknowledgement of like, yeah, you're great for what you've done, but I'm great for what I've done. And, and, and don't try to bring me down, you know, by telling everyone my business because, you know, you're going to go home to your life and I'm going to go home to my life. So in terms, of, in terms of my work with Oprah, like, I don't want this to sound like bragging because there's a lot of stuff I haven't done yet. But God gave me a certain ability to just – have insight in, in psychological and spiritual matters. And I think that's why my books have uh, gotten the reviews that they have. And I don't know if it'll be Oprah or it'll be someone else. I recently uh, did a podcast on, um, you know, what I would envision of, of a publishing contract in the future. I mean, in some of the larger ones that have been out there. And I think that, um, you know, God will use you the way that he wants to use you. Like God, Oprah has outsized talent and he's used her in a big way. And you could have outsized talent and God could just use you in a smaller way. But I feel that I'm ready for, um, you know, people like Oprah and Shamath and other people like that to uh, to be appreciated. Like I've always kind of hid my life under a bushel. I felt guilty, um, you know, associating with high level people. And I kind of like wanted to be in a strong, the stronger one in a relationship. So I would hang out with people that were less than me. And it took me like 40, 50 years to kind of grow tired of that. And it's just kind of my own fault. Like maybe I didn't have as much emotional intelligence because I made that same mistake over and over again, trying to feel better about myself by being around people that are, you know, not bad, but are, you know, that I can feel superior to. And I don't mind feeling inferior. That's not, I'm going to change that language because that's not good language. I don't mind like learning from other people because, you know, they say that the smartest people, you know, hang out with people that are smarter than them and that you become the average of the five people that you hang around. So when I start, do start working with Oprah, it's going to bring, you know, our contribution to a whole, entirely new level, just like, you know, her associations with like her super soul Sundays have brought, you know, her network to a new level. And um, it's going to be something that's never really been seen before. It's going to be better than anything that's been done before uh, for her or for me.